quick energizer before we started our presentation. So if you guys just all stand up. We're going to teach you the, um, the chant that they do at the beginning of the day from Arundel that's also um, from Freedom School. Yeah. So it goes like, how y'all feeling? And so we'll go like, fantastic, terrific, great, all day long. And then you, whoa. It's real easy, real easy. Okay. So y'all ready? Okay. How y'all feeling? Fantastic, terrific, great, all day long. Whoa. And then we can do like slow motion. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> it's awkward sitting, okay? Okay. So if you want to know what families want and need, you should ask them, right? That's exactly what we do at the start of every school year. I work at the historic Cherry Hill Elementary Middle School as the community school coordinator. My role within this, this 21st century school is to leverage partnerships, resources, services that support the needs of our schools, scholars, families, and community members. And I can, say, I can say that, in fact, we ask our families what they want a lot. For example, when we start new initiatives, we ask for their feedback. We ask them about the budget each year. They do a needs assessment, and they take a survey from the school district at the end of the year. And from this, we get a lot of good feedback. About a month into the school year, I got a new perspective on this practice. As I was a new to the school and super excited to get to know the families of Cherry Hill. And to do this, I thought I had a great idea. Let's do a survey. I called it Donuts with the CSC, which basically meant you got a donut for filling out a survey. Everything was going great. Many families offered their feedback with no hesitation. But then I stumbled upon Mrs. Smith. And don't worry, we're using fake names, so no grandmas were harmed in this, in this presentation. When I asked her to fill the survey, she gave me a look. <laughs> and you all know that look that I'm talking about. You know you're about to get it. I could feel her frustration. She said, I'm not doing it. What's the point? You guys come in here and do all these surveys, and nothing ever changes. And I am no longer putting the energy into it. It was hard for me to hear this, but it made me think, what do our families get from these surveys? What are we doing with the information that they get, that, we give, that they give us? Just collecting it so we can say we did? How do we know that, we really, that they really feel heard and we're not just checking a box to meet a policy? This might sound like a familiar story to some, but Cherry Hill is unique, a, a unique neighborhood and it has an exceptionally unique history. What people need to know about Cherry Hill is that outsiders often come in and say they're here to help. They're there for the minute, exploit the assets of the community, and then they leave when their grant is up. And I'm an outsider too, and I have to own that. So what is my purpose? I serve as the program director of the Cherry Hill Education Initiative with Baltimore City Public Schools. My job is to connect community initiatives, organizations, schools, and funders to ensure we have great schools in Cherry Hill. And it's important that I own my privilege and know that my purpose is to support the Cherry Hill community to create the change they want to see and act as a bridge between them and different systems. And along the way, I've developed a deep, deep love for this community. For folks that aren't for, from Cherry Hill, let me share some lingo you'll need to know. So there's the community of Cherry Hill. There's a school for pre-K to second grade named Arundel Elementary, and there's a third through eighth grade school called the Historic Cherry Hill Elementary Middle, which we'll refer to as CHEMS. It's also important for you to know that Cherry Hill was the first post-war intentionally segregated housing community in the United States. It was designed for black veterans returning from World War II, where the GI Bill created generational wealth for white residents across the country through home ownership. In Cherry Hill, Baltimore, officials also deliberately decided to build 1,800 units of public housing, halting the growth of property values. And on top of that, Cherry Hill is separated from the rest of the city by a bridge making it hard to get in and out of Cherry Hill. Today, Cherry Hill has 1,300 public housing homes and is the largest public housing development in Baltimore. Despite this, 
Cherry Hill residents call themselves rich, which means raised in Cherry Hill. There is a real pride and the community nurtures itself. Cherry Hill is also the last underdeveloped waterfront property in Baltimore and residents fear they may be pushed out. However, community leaders are making sure this doesn't happen. Five years ago, a group of Cherry Hill residents decided to bring purpose-built communities to the neighborhood. Purpose-built is a national model of community transformation that is led by communities with a focus on wellness, housing, economic vitality, and education. Five years later, Cherry Hill is almost an official purpose-built community and has started Cherry Hill Strong, whose executive director is here today. Um, this is a backbone organization. <laughs> um, so Cherry Hill Strong is a backbone organization that leads this work with and for the community. Baltimore City Public Schools has also been investing in Cherry Hill for a long time. The community has received two 21st century beautiful new buildings, and the district has heavily invested in early childhood work, including housing a Judy Center, early learning hub, um, early Head Start, and Head Start in Arundel Elementary. Serving as the lead for the Cherry Hill Education Initiative was the perfect next step for the district's investment. This brings us back to today. After many, many listening sessions with the community, we started to hear and notice some resounding themes. Through this work, the community was already telling us what they demanded. Communication, Communication respect, respect, care, care trust, trust, safety. Today, we want to talk to you about two key strategies that we are implementing in response, two-way communication and transitions. So I want you all to think about Mrs. Smith, the grandmother that I was speaking to. She acknowledged that two-way communication wasn't really happening. So what are we going to do about it? We know what it means to us. In fact, it's in our district's policy. Our policy says that families and school staff are key partners in decisions that affect children and families together, inform, influence, and create policies, practices, and programs so, there, so that there is regular communication about district and school level priorities and that this communication happens in a language and format that families can easily understand. The Office of Engagement provides district supports through professional development, coaching, and technical assistance to all schools in Baltimore City. This places an emphasis on the importance of family voice in everything we do. With the push from Mrs. Smith, we are being more intentional in how we engage families. This is where the School Family and Community Council comes in. Our policy mandates that all schools in Baltimore City have a school, family, and community council. This is a group of staff, families, community organizations, and school leadership that advises around decisions that impact the school and academic achievement. We aren't going to make the same mistake by just checking the school, family, community council box to meet a policy. We are intentionally bringing together a strong group of school advocates who can push our thinking around how to accomplish our goals for both schools. Realizing that CHEMS and Arundel need to come together, we decided to merge our councils. Our first meeting elevated the gaps that we needed to be filled with support from both schools, but also showed that people were ready to get to work. From school secretaries, to community partners, to parents, to teachers, even a seventh grader. People showed up excited to contribute to their school community. We have another way that our families are contributing to our schools, and it's my personal favorite, CHEMS Organized Parent Group, otherwise known as OPG. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> When I got to the school this year, there was no space where parents and caregivers could comfortably speak out and find ways to contribute to the school. We all know it takes a village to raise a child, so why aren't we using ours? What better way to create an environment of culturally relevant communication, mutual respect, trust, care, and safety through than a group run by parents and caregivers? Just know every third Wednesday, you can find us in the community room with the OPG. Both schools have almost completed their homeschool compacts through the FACE Fellowship, which is federally mandated action plan for Title I schools, and created in partnership with families so we all can work together towards academic success. It's funny how when you start actively listening, people start to tell you things. One thing we heard over and over was about how daunting the transition from Arundel to CHEMS is for our families. Now, be reminded that Cherry Hill has a unique setup, 
Arundel is a pre-K to second school, and Chems is third through eighth. So the transition from one school to another happens earlier than it normally would. Families expressed feeling overwhelmed at the idea of their third grader going to school with middle schoolers. They also wanted to understand how to navigate their new school and become part of that community in the same way they are at Arundel. Since we can't teleport everyone right now, though that would be fun, I am going to take a few seconds and describe to you what Arundel is like just to paint the picture, and there are some photos to illustrate. Arundel is an early childhood school. It has community resources in the building, like we've said, the Judy Center Early Learning Hub and Head Start. It's a place where families are used to coming from the time their babies are born. It's bright and colorful and full of excitement about learning. CHEMS is a beautiful new building with murals heralding influential black Americans and signs proclaiming the vision and core values such as Ubuntu, I am because we are. It is a place that exudes its goal to foster academic rigor and pride in your school. Suffice it to say, the big kids go here. The schools are three blocks from each other, but the distance can feel much bigger. The principals of both schools are dedicated to bridging this gap. In the past, second graders had one shadow day where they went over to CHEMS for a tour of the school at the end of the year. However, this year we are doing something different. First, both schools are participating in the same professional development. Arundel will soon have their second graders do student-led conferences because this is what they'll do when they get to CHEMS, and we've merged our school family community councils, but you already know about that. Second, we're developing three engagement events that happen every spring to introduce students and families to CHEMS, and we're trying to bring the schools together in every way we can on a regular basis, and we're already seeing the power in this. Recently, we sat down with our principals and gave them our pitch. Both were on board, and the Arundel principal, Mrs. Machado, had an idea. She said, well, we're inviting guest readers next week to read for American Education Week. Principal Guzman, do you want to read to our second graders? Immediately, Principal Guzman was on board, and he came back with three books to see which one would be the best to read. The next week, he was in front of our second graders. Now, I never even could have anticipated the reception he was going to get. I thought the students were going to take him down with all their hugs and excitement to meet their principal for next year. He left them feeling so excited to go to their new school. A couple weeks later, I happened to be spending time with some second graders and asked them what their favorite part of school was. To my shock and delight, they said, the guest reader. I just needed to make sure I was hearing correctly, so I said, what guest reader? And they said, our new principal. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I had to keep it cool. I didn't want these second graders to think I was a nerd, um, <laughs> but it really showed that our vision is on point and headed in the right direction. This is exactly why we are committed to carrying out the transitions work. Earlier we shared that families told us what they deserved. Communication, Communication respect, respect, care, care trust, trust, safety. safety. Making sure families and students feel safe and welcomed on day one of their new school is why this work matters. Our overall vision is Cherry Hill schools are, pla are a place where authentic, trusting relationships between schools, families, and communities are central. Families in Cherry Hill are partners in decision making and play a key role in the creation of strategies that impact their children and their community. This fosters academic success, student wholeness, and the strength of Cherry Hill. And the good news is, we aren't starting from scratch. Baltimore City Public Schools leadership has invested authentic family engagement strategies to be implemented across the district. It is embedded in all our strategies and sustained with adequate monetary resources and organizational structure. Also, we have some key community partners who are vital supporters in this work, including some who are here today. Cherry Hill Strong, dream big and elevate. Our vision is to work with and for Cherry Hill to make our schools a place where authentic family voice is centered while also creating a successful model we can all replicate across Baltimore City. So lend us your voice. For our Baltimore friends, can we make a promise to continue to elevate this work and allocate the resources needed to drive this work forward? 
Let's tell the story about how important platforms for authentic shared decision making at the district and school level and the change they are driving and push leaders to make this a priority. And for all of us, can we all make a promise? to push leaders to center family voices. Let's properly compensate and resource them since we know our communities have been doing this for free for years. And remember, when you hear your community speak, listen. Thank you from us and the whole Cherry Hill Flamboyant Fellowship team. We want to leave you with the voice of our community. Here is Ms. Malika Brown. Cherry Hill is more than just a neighborhood. It's a community. It's a place that I call home. It's a multi-generational network of support and love for former, current, and new residents. Education is held in its highest regard. Community members, leaders, and stakeholders rallied together to ensure that when 21st century schools came to Baltimore City, that Cherry Hill would be the first. These two brand new schools show the children of the community that education is important, that school can be fun, that you have the opportunities here to reach your wildest dreams. I'm a product of those schools. I'm a product of the community. I've seen growth from my age to my children's age now, and I hope to continue to call this place home.